Uh, hey, you're listening to Sin. It's Dominic here, and I'm joined with a great lyricist and vocalist, uh, best known for his outstanding work uh, in the Dillinger Escape Plan. But he has a brand new album coming out on the 9th of May with a veritable supergroup of heavy music legends. The album is called Killer Be Killed. The band is called Killer Be Killed. And with me is Mr. Greg Pachado. How are you, mate? Hey, how you going, man? I'm good, I'm good. It uh, sounds like it's a, a bit windy. Where are you? I'm in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's like the middle of the desert. So, uh, yeah, there's like tumbleweeds of, of mass, of what I went out flying around. It's like Breaking Bad territory. Oh, you know? that's, that's the best kind of territory to be in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I apologize for the wind in advance, man. There's uh, there's no there's no quiet place inside, and it's fucking windy outside. So. That's all good. Um, firstly, I want to say congratulations on the album because it sounds bloody spectacular. Thank you, you so much, man. That, that's cool. I know you have to answer this question an awful lot, but what were the events that brought Killer Be Killed together? I've never ever answered that. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> No, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of things that uh, that kind of you know, are in play. Like when you start going backwards, you know, in life, and like, how did you get to this point? You're like, okay, well, I've known Troy from Mastodon since maybe 12 years or so. You know, we used to tour together. We've toured with Mastodon more than any other band. So we've we've toured together multiple times over the years since uh, 2001 or so. And uh, Max, I've known for about six years now, and uh, I did a guest vocal on a Soulfly song in 2009 and we had such a good time doing it and uh, it's crazy to even think that that was five years ago now but uh, when we did it you know we kind of were like you know we should do an album at some point we were talking about Nail Bomb and how cool it was you know not sonically to, to do an album that sounded like Nail Bomb but just the idea of doing a one-off collaborative album instead of like a, just one song and, and it's kind of unheard of like people really don't do that in, in metal that often you know people do a guest vocal on a song but they never really uh, take it to the whole you know doing a whole album and, and they do do that in like pop and hip hop and, and rap and jazz and other genres of music but for some reason or another uh, people in metal don't seem to uh, to go outside of their comfort zone you know that much once they've achieved any level of success or they're known for something so it seemed very exciting for us to do and uh, you know so at that point in time it was pretty much considered a project you know a one off project with Max and I and then once Troy got involved um, we were on tour with Mastodon in 2011 and Troy asked me who was playing bass on the record and uh, I told him I didn't know you know maybe Maybe Max or myself would, would play the bass too, and he was like, "No, no, no, I'm I'm playing bass." And you know, I think it would be really cool if uh, if I sang too. And then it was really exciting, and then it, it kind of became more of a, a band and, and wasn't a project anymore. And uh, that's really when the uh, the genesis of how everything sounds now when I listen to it is, is obviously the the sonic fingerprint of it is the fact that Max and me and Troy are all singing, you know, on each song, and I can you know the different riffs that all three of us brought to the band. It's it's you know that was like a huge huge. Um, addition, and that's what that's what changed it from being a project to, to a band, really. That's cool. Yeah, you mentioned Nail Bomb just before, it's like sort of being a, like an influence in terms of being just that sort of you know an album that's a collaboration with other artists. Did you did you write songs initially in the vein or style of Nail Bomb, and then they changed over time, or was it like from the, from get go it was like this is this is not going to be Nail Bomb too? Well, I kind of I'm a big fan of like writing honestly and like being honest with yourself. I don't really like steering output too much because then you're, you're trying to make something instead of just allowing whatever's going to happen to happen. Uh, so, I mean, we, we, we kind of went into it more or less at, you know, with that as not, like I said, not like a sonic guide, but more of the idea and the spirit of, hey, let's, you know, we don't need to be in like a record cycle. We don't need to go on tour. We don't need to, we can just do something because we're excited about creating with one another. It doesn't need to be part of like this larger machine, which is what kind of happens to, you know, bands over time is that they just get stuck into like, you know, the kind of ex expectation that you're going to put another album out and you're going to go on tour and you're going to play everywhere in the world and you're going to you know go on tour for a year and a half and play 300 shows and like it was really freeing to be like hey we don't we're going to do this because we want to do it and we're going to play if we want to play and we're going to make another album if we want to make another album and we're and there's not going to be like this expectation that we have to and and instead of there being an expectation that we have to we want to really let people know that they should not have any expectation of that happening at all so that way you know if this is one album or if we we do only decide to play one show that we'll do it because we feel like doing it not because people expect us to you know yeah. it keeps it more pure that way I think yeah it's like a really yeah I was going to say that like, that's like a really just freeing creative decision to sort of be like so you sort of just instead of just uh, being like a one and done it's just leaving it open so like uh, you know it's more of a wait and see situation instead of just um, definite plans for like a like a tour 
or anything like that. Right, right. And like with every with everything you know, with everything else we're involved in, there's such expectation around it all. Uh, and uh, I mean, we, I love going on tour with Dillinger Escape Man. I love playing shows. Luckily, I, I you know we we all love doing it, and, and Mass and I and then Max, you know, feel the same way. But there is an expectation that when we put a Dillinger Escape Man record out, we're gonna go. A, every city in the world and it's going to take a year and a half to do it and like you know if we didn't go to Australia or if we didn't go to the UK if we didn't go to Germany like people in those places would be pissed you know at us <laughs> like why didn't you guys come here you know well, why did you only tour the US or why did you only tour you know this other place it, it, there is like a level of uh, with, with all our other bands that once you start at all you have to do all, you have to do everything you know you can't just go out and do 10 shows you know it, 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 it pisses people off mm-hmm. so, like with uh, with uh, with this I kind of wanted to right away out of the gate like have it be more of a vibe of like hey we do this when we want to do it you know we do it because we want to do it because we're excited about it and don't you can't get mad at us if we only play like one festival <laughs> in Germany or like one show in you know the UK or something like that because we it's a pain in the ass for us to even get together it's like a logistical nightmare for us to even get together so if, you know us making a record or us doing a show is purely because we're really excited about it and really really want to do it and that, that feels great honestly yeah yeah, and it's like, yeah, as you said, a logistical nightmare. You'd have to have all the moons aligned so that you could all get together in the one spot. <laughs> right, yeah, and two of us have families. You know, Max and Troy have families. So if, you know, there's two weeks of time that we all have off, it also has to be like, hey, you know, you've been on tour for a year. You've got two weeks off right now. And instead of going on vacation with your family, let's go play some <laughs> other shows, you know? <laughs> yeah. So if we, for, so for us to do it, it's going to have to be because we really, really want to, you know? And uh, that's it, it, like I said, it keeps it more pure that way it makes you feel like you're 15 years old when you're doing something purely because you're excited about it not because there's any expectation that's cool back on the on the album I love how uh, in the in the songs themselves there's, there's like really strong changes uh, sort of I, I guess dynamically between each vocalist and it happens without the song sort of falling apart because you guys all have, all have such different voices um, but how did you right. how did you handle like the lyric writing duties between the three vocalists because you've all got different styles and did you just all write lyrics yeah it was together? very yeah we we, we, it turned out that it was, you know, when we first thought about that, it was, you know, that was something that we decided early on that was going to kind of be like a sonic fingerprint of the record is that we wanted to all sing on every song you know, and kind of take like a, almost like a, uh, a hip hop approach to it where, you know, if you had like a song that had Nas and Jay-Z and, and Kanye West on it, they would all do a verse and they would all sing different parts and it makes it exciting to listen to. We, we didn't want it to be, okay, here's Troy's song and here's Max's song and Craig's song. That would have been easier, but it would have been really boring. So when once we decided that we all have, we want all three of us on every song then it became like oh shit like that's kind of how how are we going to do that like that's going to be like crazy and uh it, you know not just because how are we going to decide to sing what part but how are we going to write lyrics and have it make sense and what well, we all have to styles and uh, it ended up not being as difficult as, as i thought because what would naturally happen is we'd all be in the room and we'd be listening to one of the songs and one of us pretty naturally would have a really strong idea about one part so if we were listening to a song and you know we're kind of sitting there with you know pens and paper and then Troy is like hey hey like this part coming up like I've got a really I've got an idea for this part I've already got lyrics in my head I've got a melody and like I feel really strongly about it so I really would like to take this part and then once someone does that and there was almost every single song there was at least one part that one person felt really strongly about first you know before anyone else had any ideas and once one person colors in their part then you can kind of all it's a lot easier to build in around them fill in the blanks around them and uh, kind of springboard off of them and then you can kind of be like hey what are you what are you writing about here like where is this coming from what's the what theme that you're you're dealing with here and most of the time those themes were fairly universal and one of the themes that we found that we kept coming back to was kind of like um, this, this conquering of, of personal demons and uh, you know which ended up being the uh, the, the meaning behind the name too uh, of killer be killed is just taking control of your the, the unconscious personal demons that are driving you that you don't know exist and, and confronting them and, and, uh, and keeping them under control or in, in your life so that they don't cause uh, negativity you know, in you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, like the seeds of the project itself uh, started uh, way back about uh, four years ago and so you, I read that you guys sort of like wrote bits and pieces in that time and then got together for like a 72 hour jam session in the desert um, you're, in, you're, in the, you're in Albuquerque right now you're pretty much in the desert it seems like a lot of great riffs come from desert jams like is that is that uh, something right. that you do often well 
I mean, you know, you're definitely right about that. There's like a lot of great records and a lot of great songs and things that have been written in the desert, you know, the Queens of the Stone Age and, you know, have kind of, you know, made that famous through, you know, the, the desert session thing that mm-hmm. Josh Homme does. And, uh, I mean, um, we, yeah, we went out and like, it's easy to isolate in the desert because there's nothing to do. There's no <laughs> distraction. You know, people think that, people think that in order to be stimulated, you need to go to some place that's like a cultural, you know, epicenter. And, and you, you really don't because you, to, you know, having a lot of bars and a lot of things to do and a lot of places to go, that's, that's not, that has nothing to do with culture. You know, that's just all like distraction. So mm-hmm. when you're in a place, you know, like LA and you have even the slightest bit of ADD, or if you're in a place like New York and you have even the slightest bit of ADD, you, there's always something else to do. But if you're in the middle of the desert and the only thing, there's nothing around you worth doing for, you know, 20 miles, it, it keeps you focused just by way of, of, uh, of, of not having distraction. So yeah, I like the, the, I was going to say, the restriction of like having nothing else to do keeps you uh, creative. You're, you're sort of exploring your own your own sign, your, your own well, mind. Yeah, all your creativity you. comes from your mind anyway. Yeah, all your creativity comes from within. It's, it's full of very mistaken thinking that like creativity comes from outside of you. It comes from within you. And, and uh, you know, it, it, when, it, when it comes from outside of you, it's because you're living your life and you're going through, you know, ups and downs and relationships and trials and tribulations, dealing with something from your childhood. You're dealing with the fallout of a, of a relationship or, or some type of, you know, mental psychosis or something. But it, that's when it comes time to actually write and, and output all the anything that's distracting it, there's a bad thing so I, I'm, I'm a really big fan of kind of desolation when it comes to, to writing because it just leaves you with nothing but, but yourself you know at that point and, uh, and, and, it's, and it's you know a little bit more productive to, to not have those, those uh, distractions with you yeah 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 all of you Dillinger boys you're always so busy not just with the band but with like numerous collaborations and side projects and stuff for example is there anything you can say about the Black Queen anything at all I mean, well, that's kind of next for me. That's the thing that, like, now, now the killer we killed is, is written and done, and it's and it's it's uh you know getting ready to be released. Like, the Black Queen is the thing that is uh, that that my attention is directed to at the moment. You know, besides playing shows with Dillinger Under Escape Plan, because we're perpetually on tour. Mm-hmm. Um, we're that record is probably about sixty percent of the way done. So I'm guessing we're looking at maybe really early 2015, like January or February 2015 for that. And uh, I think it's really going to surprise people because it doesn't it's not it's not metal or even rock in, in, in the slightest but it's, it's hard for me to uh, even even categorize it honestly that's cool I mean you know uh, th- putting things in boxes sometimes just it's a, a bit of a I mean you can't really put I was listening to the album and you can't really put Killer Be Killed stuff in a sp- like a specific box other than heavy music other than metal sort of stuff because it just goes yeah goes Killer Be Killed to me really was like three people that really like all genres of metal like we're all fans of every, every we grew up you know listening to metal and, and I like everything from hardcore and punk to grind Core to, to stoner metal to doom to, to thrash to you know swamp rock like we all like everything so when it came time to write the, you know the record is almost you know as far as like the musical side of it kind of a celebration of just all the different genres of you know of metal together we're, we're a fan of, of a lot of different genres and, and when I listen back to the record now dynamically the fact that we touched on so many different things allows us now it makes me excited to do another one so now like I, I was talking to Troy actually yesterday about like man like we there's so many elements of this record that we could zoom in on now and we could we could decide on the next one to slow down and, and make it doomier, or we could you know decide to speed up and make it thrashier. There's like so many different you know things we touched on that uh, that, that we're excited already to, to write another one. Awesome. Okay. Well, Killer Be Killed self-titled debut comes out May 9th, and from that band and the Dillinger Escape Plan, the incomparable Greg Pachado. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. Thank you. Thank okay. you for the time, man. Yeah. That's all, that's all good. Murder!